Well, I had to go see Unbreakable in theaters because of M. Night Shyamalan's Sixth Sense. This was his follow-up. I don't remember really going into this movie with any kind of idea other than what I saw in the trailers, which is a man in a train is the only survivor. Go. Unbreakable is a sneaky movie because we didn't know it was a superhero movie. I mean, you walk into that and you hear it's from Shyamalan and we assume it's gonna be a horror movie or there's gonna be some sort of paranormal thing going on and then it flips everything on its ear and this is a superhero movie and it's one of the best ones that's ever come out. Bruce Willis is a guy who survives this horrible train crash. The entire film is him trying to figure out why he survived this train crash. And Samuel L. Jackson plays this guy in a wheelchair who's trying to help him figure it out. I think the concept is very cool. I love the juxtaposition of these two guys, the one who's constantly getting hurt, but then on the other side of that, somebody who can never get hurt, and finding out that those two things exist together, that was interesting. I believe comics are our last link to an ancient way of passing on history. If you weren't a fan of some of M. Night Shyamalan's filmography and you opted to skip Unbreakable for whatever reason, I cannot tell you enough. This thing is a must watch. The first time I saw Unbreakable, I absolutely loved it. I was blown away by it. I think M. Night, this might be my favorite film of his. And what's crazy about it is he made a more grounded film than Chris Nolan in terms of making a superhero movie, where what if you made a Superman movie where Superman didn't know he was Superman? I feel it's what, in essence, Zack Snyder wanted to do with Man of Steel, in that, you know, don't show your powers, wander the earth and don't get involved, but in a much more complex and deep way. I think my favorite part about this movie was how they took a classic comic book origin story and brought it into the realistic world of any other dramatic film. The performances in this film are amazing. Bruce Willis is, uh, it's one of the best performances he's ever delivered, one of the most understated performances, one of the most heartbreaking, powerfully vulnerable performances he's ever delivered. I think this is where we shake hands. Samuel L. Jackson is just so good and sneaky. This is one of his greatest roles. I tell you what, Sam, Samuel L. Jackson, when he's not wearing a backwards Kangol hat at a celebrity golf tournament, he is a pretty good actor in these weird situational character roles. Once again, please. Every new time we see Samuel L. Jackson on screen in this movie, we get a little more revealed about his character. And M. Night Shyamalan really avoids the temptation to give us too much too quickly. They call me Mr. Glass at school because I break like glass. Really, just the character of Elijah, period. He is so interesting. And while he does do terrible things, what the movie does is very clearly shows you his perspective and very convincingly shows you why he does what he wants to do, what intrigues him. Having the villain tied in with the origin of the superhero, it makes certain sense. And specifically with Unbreakable, it makes a lot of sense because Mr. Glass was looking for his superhero because he thought of himself as a supervillain. He is truly Lex Luthor. If there is someone like me in the world, couldn't there be someone else the opposite of me at the other end? The other thing we have to recognize here is that Unbreakable is an original story, and we're talking about a list that's largely populated by franchises. This was just a great movie in and of itself, and I think that's why it resonates so much today, and especially now with all this split hype and what we're gonna get after it. It was really hard when Split came out to tell people, hey, have you seen um, all of M. Night Shyamalan's movies? Like, you had to get into it very general. Have you seen Signs? Have you seen The Sixth Sense? How about Unbreakable? Have you, have you seen that? You should watch all those movies before you see Split. I have a ton of Shyamalan fatigue. I haven't seen a Shyamalan movie in ages. And if it wasn't for everyone talking about Split in the last year, I never would have flipped these movies on. There's a reason I took, it took me 16 years to watch this movie. One of the most exciting things they're doing with Unbreakable right now is how they just turned it into a franchise using Split. And then I have my fingers crossed so, so tightly that M. Night Shyamalan finds a brilliant way to bring them all together because they are two exceptional movies, and I think they deserve that really, really strong third one to time together. It has begun. The thing about Unbreakable is that it's a really good movie, but he's not a superhero. I'm getting a lot of looks from the crowd right now. So it takes him a long time to become a superhero. It takes like 90% of the movie, but he does get there. This movie has that M. Night Shyamalan feel to it. Mystery, intrigue, Willis but it doesn't 
It's not a superhero movie to me. Every origin film that we see in the comic book movie genre is doing the exact same thing that Unbreakable did in this film. Listen, if you're gonna put Bruce Willis in a superhero movie, John McClane in the first Die Hard, he saves Nakatomi Plaza, okay? Bruce Willis as Unbreakable is like, watch me get into a train accident. Unbreakable belongs on this list just like Chronicle belongs on this list because it is the origin story of a superhero that goes hand in hand with the origin story of the supervillain. Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. I love this film. It, it hit me at my core, it punched me in the gut, and I think that that's what a great movie does. So I'm in on that number. Put Unbreakable in the top 10. Get it up there. Yeah, it needs to go higher. I don't know if this is a top 20 superhero movie. It's probably pretty close though. I'm fine with 16. Um, and you know, some people will watch Unbreakable and think that maybe it doesn't move fast enough or there's not enough action or you know, they might have some critiques, but um, they're all wrong. I love Unbreakable at 16 on this list simply because if I had to guess which movies were going to be in the top 20, I never would have considered this movie. This, this is our plot twist. This is our Shyamalan twist in the top 20 because we didn't see this one coming. We're thinking, oh, how many Spider-Man movies? How many Batman movies? We forgot about Unbreakable. It's the last time that we can forget about Mr. Glass.